and Dr. Zach Williams and Flat Creek Baptist Church as we dive deeper into God's Word in this podcast titled New Horizons. Good morning. My name is Caleb Lang and I am here with you on the New Horizons podcast. I'm so excited to be here with you again today. Uh, If you missed yesterday's episode, I'm actually the associate pastor at Flat Creek Baptist Church. Uh, And I'm filling in for Pastor Zach as he is on vacation for a week, some much-deserved time away uh, with his family. And I know they are just so excited to be able to get away, just the five of them, uh, and enjoy some relaxation on the beach. But while he's gone, I'm going to do uh, a small series titled The Fruits of the Spirit in the Life of David. Uh, Yesterday we looked at love uh, and we highlighted the love-friendship bond between David and Jonathan. Today we're going to just keep right on going with the fruits of the Spirit. And the next one is joy. Uh, And so today we're going to look at joy in the life of David. And I would like to imply that it might mean something a little bit different from what we're used to. Joy typically is going to be uh, remembered or your first response to joy is going to be something to do with uh, just great happiness, uh, excitement, and just, just finding your way and really enjoying life in that moment. What I want to argue is that it's more. It's so much more than just getting excited in any given moment. I want to suggest that there's something deeper about joy than just being filled with excitement or just being content or just being happy. If you will, uh, if you're able, I should say, Uh, to read along. I'm going to be reading from the book of Psalms chapter 1 and chapter 3. Now I don't want to take a whole lot of time to read all of the text, but I want to highlight a few key verses from both of these chapters. I'm going to read uh, Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. I think, my opinion, is these three verses give a clear definition of a man filled with joy. Some things are lost in our English translations, and one of them I'd like to point out in verse 1 where it says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Blessed is a good translation, but it's not complete. A more accurate translation would be how happy, happy is the man. This is beyond just contented, or contentment, I'm sorry, or just blessed. This is a happy happiness. This is deep down in your soul. You are filled with joy. Uh, A more accurate definition of the word joy is a deep-rooted, inspired happiness. This is something that goes, like I said before, goes beyond just excitement. Goes beyond anxiety, uh, positive anxiety and anticipation for something exciting happening. This is... If you could figure out how to encompass words like contentment with peace, with happiness, with excitement, all into one word, it would be that three-letter little word, joy. In Psalms chapter 1, David understands very easily one decision you can make in your life to be filled with this happy happiness for all of your days. I'll read it to you again. How blessed or how happy, happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. 
This is the key right here. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. If you never hear anything else from Scripture, if you never hear anything else from a pastor or from a teacher or from a evangelist, hear this, my friends. You want joy in your life? You meditate on the Word of God day and night, and you'll find it. Guarantee. It's not my guarantee. It's not, this is not Caleb saying, look, if you want peace and joy in your life, this is how you get it. It's not me suggesting that I have the answer. It's me highlighting the answer from Scripture. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law does he meditate day and night. Let's look ahead uh, to Psalms chapter 3. Let me give you some backstory as to why David has written the, ch the third chapter of the book of Psalm. Leading up to this chapter is when David's son Absalom has essentially uh, started a mutiny or a revolution against David and his leadership. He has thrown him out of his own kingdom. David and all those loyal to him are forced to march out of the kingdom that he had to fight for for so many years, that he had to wait for for years and understand what patience actually means, understand God's faithfulness, and now it's been taken away from him by his own son. His own flesh and blood has done this to him. And so as you read it, the story becomes clear. O Lord, how my, this is Psalm chapter 3, verse 1. O Lord, how my adversaries have increased. Many are rising up against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no deliverance for him in God. Verse 3. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the one who lifts my head. I was crying to the Lord with my voice, and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustains me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have smitten all my enemies on the cheek. You have shattered the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Now, I don't understand how somebody could not read Psalms chapter 3 and get excited. That's just, I, you might have heard it. I just, I'm reading it, I'm reading it to you right now and I'm starting to get excited. It's just a exciting chapter in scripture. David being forced to leave his own country by his son still somehow worships the Lord. To, it's, it's amazing to me. There are so many situations in life where you're going to find yourself down in the dumps. Sure, absolutely. But if you can understand this book, reading this book, meditating on this book, studying this book, using this book as an offering of worship back to God will bring you a deep rooted, inspired happiness. This is going to wrap up our uh, lesson on joy in the life of David. Uh, tomorrow, we will continue on with the fruits of the Spirit in the life of David, uh, and we'll have seven more to go uh, after we're done today. I pray that the Lord bless you this afternoon, and I hope that uh, you have a great day, and I look forward to getting to talk with you again tomorrow.